Welcome to Guitar Search Saturdays. My name's Shane. Today we're heading to Atlanta Vintage Guitars in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm also joined by Hunter from the Agu Fish Guitar Channel on YouTube. A huge thanks to Hunter for filming this episode. I really appreciate it. He has some of the best demos on YouTube, so head over to his channel and click subscribe. I'll post all links in the description and also in the cards. I'm grateful Hunter has helped narrate this particular episode because the reason is there's lots of pointy guitars that I know nothing about, so it's awesome to have him along. There's not only pointy guitars here, there's lots of great classic instruments like tallies as well, so it should be a lot of fun. Let's go in and take a look. PV. Boom, what a great way to start. That's the infamous Red Stripe PV Bandit. This is my favorite version of the PV Bandit. The reason is it was the last version of these amps to still use a spring reverb. Awesome. I think we just struck PV Goal. This is a PV Classic 410 amplifier. Check it out, usually these amps you'll find them in, well, fake tweed, but this particular one has black Tolex, so it looks pretty old school. I actually thought this was a Fender DeVille when I first saw it. In Australia, I've never actually come across a PV Classic with this type of Tolex. In my opinion, the clean tone on these amps is spectacular. Check them out. This is the wall of PV. Not only was there the Red Stripe Bandit, but there's also a couple of Silver Stripe Bandits, as well as a Studio Pro 40. Awesome. The Silver Stripe versions of the PV Bandit definitely have more of a vintage vibe. If you like more of that old school sound, they're a great choice. Hey guys, this is Hunter from the Agafish YouTube channel. Angry music is kind of my thing, so for the more metal-ish guitars, Shane has asked me to provide some commentary. So starting off with a guitar from one of my favorite lines, this is an LTD EC256. They have the classic shape of a Les Paul, but they actually play more like a Super Strat. This is one of the lower end models, but it's still surprisingly good. And to the left, cue the alarm. Please remain calm. We have our first official lefty sighting. We have a Schecter of some sort. I'm not too familiar with Schecter. I believe it's a discontinued C7 Custom with Seymour Duncan pickups. Whatever it is, you don't see many 7-string guitars for lefties, so that's cool. Hiding in shame behind another Schecter guitar is one of the dumbest looking guitars I've ever seen. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what to say about it. I guess someone thought it was a good idea. And next to that is another interesting looking guitar. It's an OLP tin top. OLP haven't been in business since about 2009, so these are pretty rare and the Distress top is really cool. Then we've got a Dean Razorback, a couple of BC Riches, and a Dean Dave Mustaine Signature Vehement Endgame. Dean are doing a lot with detailed graphic finishes, and the Mustaine Vehement series are some of their most popular models. Oh my god, we have another wacky left-handed guitar. Hit me with that alarm, Shane. Thanks, Shane. So this looks like it's a copy of a Gibson Carina Explorer, but since they don't make a left-handed version, someone's taken matters into their own hands. Very cool. Behind that is another Explorer, this time from the Epiphone Prophecy series, Ebony Fingerboard, EMG Pickups. You can get them on eBay in the States for about 400 bucks. Tremendous value. Alright, back to you, Shane. Thanks for that, Hunter. I've learnt two things. A, I don't know much about pointy guitars, and B, I really should have used my good microphone. <laughs> Since I first saw an ES339 by Epiphone, I always wanted to get one. Gibson slash Epiphone, in their infinite wisdom, decided to never make left-handed versions of these. I have no idea why. It's also pretty rare to find an Epiphone Dot 335 with a natural finish. Cool stuff. While I'm not a jazz guy, I can definitely appreciate the ES-175 from Epiphone. Beautiful looking guitar. 
There's definitely a whole lot of really great guitars in this shop. I'll shut up for a second and let you check them out. Here's something we haven't seen on a Guitar Search Saturday in quite some time. G&L guitars. Atlanta Vintage Guitar actually has one, two, three, four of them. On one of my trips to Florida, I actually picked up a G&L ASAC Classic in a lefty. I have to say, out of all of the guitars I've ever owned, the finish on the neck on the G&L was second to none. It was simply beautiful. Expect to see this one on Hunter's channel coming up. Just kidding, folks. <laughs> Tucked away there down the back is an Epiphone Nighthawk electric guitar. These are an obscure beast. I remember first laying my eyes on these and just getting totally confused. There's a couple of things that make the Epiphone Nighthawk look really, really strange. It looks like a Les Paul in the body, but it has a Strat style bridge. The bridge pickup is also a humbucker, but it's actually angled in. It kind of looks a bit strange. It has a single coil middle pickup and a mini humbucker neck pickup. This is one of those guitars that may actually cover just about any type of style of music, depending on what you're into. And once I got used to the aesthetic of them, I actually quite like them. Up here we have some bog standard Epiphone Les Pauls. I like that tobacco finish. Hey, this is wild. This is something you don't see every day. A Telecaster style guitar with a mini humbucker in the neck and a full size humbucker in the bridge. I'm also wondering what that actually does. While I'm not 100% certain which company makes these three Telecasters, I've got to say they look spectacular. This Newcastle Pale Ale electric guitar is definitely something very, very unique. One of the good things about it though is it's actually loaded with P90s. I gotta say though, the top horn looks a little funky. It's great to see a really nice selection of Fender Stratocasters as well as one clone. The one on the far right is actually a made in Japan Fender Strat. Nice. The white guitar is actually a mild relic Strat. I was going to say this almost looks like it could have been worn out through use. It's not overdone. This is the type of relic job that actually looks like someone's played it in as opposed to thrown it in a tub of acid. Next to the bog standard Strat in the center we have another G and L. Check it out, it actually looks like it's been played in. That said, the white guitar almost had me fooled, so odds are this is made like this at the factory. Hey hey, check this out. To the untrained eye, that looks like a Fender Telecaster. It's actually a Japanese made Tokai. Finding a Japanese Tokai in the US is definitely not easy. This is the first one that I've come across even virtually. If you're in the US and you've been unable to find any Japanese Tokai guitars, you might want to call these guys pretty quickly. Hey, Wicked, an actual 70s Princeton amplifier. This isn't a reissue, this is actually one of the old school ones. I have a feeling there'll be a Princeton amp in my imminent future. This is a really lovely wall of Telecasters. It has a mix of just about everything. Everything from a neck pickup humbucker tally to a standard single coil to a dual P90 tally, everything seems to be here. Check them out. Wow, 
that's 160 looking beast. In terms of Fender guitars, this particular configuration of pickups with the neck humbucker isn't available at all. The closest I could get would be a G&L Blues Boy, which is fundamentally the same type of configuration of pickups. This particular colour isn't something I've seen before and I really dig it. Squire have come such a long way over the last few years. Check out the finish on the fretboard, it looks beautiful. This particular Squire Strat is also loaded with EMG pickups for those who like to rock. I always feel like I neglect my acoustic audience, so here you go. Is it me, or are electric guitars just so much better to look at? Hey, check it out, a made in the USA PV electric guitar. You don't see too many of these around these days. You can generally pick these up for a bargain. They're definitely worth checking out. All right guys, Hunts are back again. Shane has asked me to talk about this ukulele. It is a, uh, it's a pink ukulele. I'd rock it. And back to you, Shane. Thanks so much, Hunter. I actually sent you through that picture as a joke just to see if you'd actually comment on it, so I totally appreciate it. A huge thanks to Atlanta Vintage Guitars for allowing Hunter to film there. I want to give a special thanks also to Hunter for not only filming and collaborating with me on this video, but also doing some narration. I totally appreciate it. Hunter has some of the best gear demos on YouTube, so head over to his channel and hit subscribe. A huge thanks to all of my Patreon subscribers. I absolutely appreciate your support. It keeps original content coming. If you do enjoy Guitar Search Saturday, please share it around with your guitar player friends. Word of mouth definitely helps the show to grow. I also have t-shirts available in the description. Lastly, this is one hell of a nice Les Paul. Thanks for watching. Catch you next week.